All right, are you ready? Yes? yes? All right, so I'm going to talk about the journey from engagement to engaged scholarship to impact. Engagement is about the process. It's about working with others, working with people across the board, inside and outside the university in a reciprocal fashion. It's about, it's about empathy. It's about equity. It's about ecosystems. It's about making sure that you're working with people shoulder to shoulder on a common, uh, on a common project with a common mission, with a common goal. Engaged scholarship to me is much more about the product. Are we and how are we strengthening, questioning, and refining our expertise? How are we creating and disseminating new knowledge? How are we preparing a new cadre of game changers? How are we developing and implementing solutions? Solutions that actually work, solutions that actually solve the problem once and for all. It's all about the product. It's all about that bundle of sticks. What are we producing? And that's what differentiates engagement and engaged scholarship. Engaged scholarship matters to me because it is directly related to socioeconomic development, and it bears this dynamic interdependence with socioeconomic development. So I'm going to give you a bunch of examples to try to make this distinction, and I'm going to use my program in humanitarian engineering and social entrepreneurship as the as kind of the, uh, the, the, um, the, the context for it. So my program has three goals, impact, impact, and impact. And when I talk about impact, it means four things. I want my solutions to be technologically appropriate, to be environmentally benign, to be culturally acceptable, and to be economically sustainable. And all four aspects are just as important. There is no point having a great technology that I cannot get in the hands of the people in developing countries that need it most. Our ventures are essentially focused on Sub-Saharan Africa and some in South Asia. We work with some of the poorest communities around the world. So we work in two areas, uh, food value chains. One of our blockbuster products is a, is a low-cost greenhouse that costs a fraction of what our competition costs. And then we have a bunch of ventures under the uh, brand name of Mashabu, which means chubby cheeked in Kiswahili. It's a sign of good health, and that's what we aspire for. We have a telemedicine system running in central Kenya with seven full-time employees that actually provide services for a small fee. To empower them further, we are working on low-cost diagnostics, like a test strip that can be mass manufactured for a couple of cents, because we can print it on an inkjet printer. So we work with faculty in material science to actually make this happen. And our, our, we have two goals for this. The primary goal is to help our health workers make more money, because that's a channel to get the technology in the hands of the people. The secondary goal is to help women cut down on the incidence of urinary tract infections or catch them early, or to screen people for diabetes, which is a very quickly rising global e epidemic. We are working on low-cost prosthetic devices that can be printed on a 3D printer for less than $20. We design with communities, but we commercialize for markets. So what does, what does engagement and engaged scholarship look like? Remember, engagement is about the process. It's about developing the sense of humility, knowing what our role is and what our position is in this wider world. And that leads to empathy with all the stakeholders so that we can step into their shoes, we can understand the choices they make, because it's in understanding those choices are we going to find ways to work with them to make life better. Engagement is about cultural understanding. Engagement is about rigorous research. Engage, and that is rigorous research within our labs, in the real world, in the communities. Engagement is about co-creating solutions with partners across the board. Engagement is about systems thinking. It's about understanding the big picture, understanding the forest and the trees. Engagement is about innovation. My students learn innovation not from me, but from all these people in resource-constrained settings who have to innovate to survive. Engagement is about that process of learning how to innovate. Engagement is about ethical decision making because we always, always, always want to do the right thing. Engagement is about grassroots diplomacy. It's about understanding how do we work with people from various walks of life in a way where we are getting the job done, but we are also doing it in a harmonious, respectful manner. Engagement is about that process. Impact comes from the outcomes of that engagement. It's about engaged scholarship. 
impact on communities for our ventures. Our windmills directly help 10,000 people, and we work with the UN Industrial Development Office to scale this up to over a million people. Our WishFast cell phone-based social networking system has over 30,000 users. It failed, it failed and failed and failed and failed until we figured out how to make it work in a very different context. Our telemedicine system has directly provided paid services to over 40,000 people and educated over 120,000 people more. That's a fraction of where we want it to be, but that's impact no matter what. In over 25 countries, we will take over your money and sell you a greenhouse which will pay for itself in about four to six months. And after that, it's sure profit. And that's how we are trying to improve the lives of, for smallholder farmers across the world. It's about the human impact. Sure, all those numbers matter, but for this old woman who lives in central Kenya and she knows she has hypertension, she knows that she has diabetes, and she doesn't have the money to make the journey out to the small town clinic, our health workers, you give her that information. So it's about that human impact, which is very difficult to put in terms of dollars and cents. It's about scholarship. Over the last six years, students, most, the vast majority of them undergraduate students, have published over 85 papers in conferences and peer-reviewed journals. And we have a similar number in the pipeline. Undergraduate students, remember that. It's about informing and inspiring innovation. We don't publish. We do not publish to fill a gap in the literature. We publish to democratize knowledge so that we can stand on the shoulders of giants. We present that at conferences. That's where they build that self-efficacy to go out and do more. It's about questioning career pathways and, and identifying other pathways where you can go out and have a larger impact. And I can tell you umpteen stories. So the question to me is not about what I am and we are. It is about I can and we can, just like Dr. Ali said. How can we make Penn State the epicenter of social innovation? That's the most natural thing to do because we have subject matter expertise on every single thing under the, under the sun. We have diverse resources. We have coverage, rural and urban, across the state and across the country. Penn State lives everywhere. We have academic freedom to explore all kinds of topics. We have stability and continuity, and most importantly, we have you. We have you. So what does it take to make Penn State the epicenter of social innovation? Five things. One, innovation happens at the intersections of disciplines, intersections of cultures and countries, intersection of learning, research, and engagement with the real world, at the intersection of academia, Governments, industries, nonprofits, communities, individuals. So what? So let's start collaborating. It's not about your major. Get out of your major. Go and take classes across the board. Go and talk to people who don't look like you. Go and collaborate. Go and understand. Go and cross-pollinate. That's where you'll find those opportunities for innovation. Focus on sustainable solutions. It's, it's all about finding so the goal, so go and volunteer at food banks, but the goal should not be to, be to build the largest food bank in the world. The goal should be to obsolete the food bank by getting to the root of the problem and figuring out how do we solve that problem so that we don't need food banks anymore. That's what makes it a sustainable solution. And to do that, the most important thing that you need to learn is to be able to differentiate between activities, outputs, and outcomes. We got a half a million dollars from USAID to grow our greenhouse company in, in Sierra Leone and Mozambique. Good bit of money. That is the starting point of the work. So I cannot wrap my head around talking about fundraising as the ultimate outcome. That's not the ultimate outcome. That's the start of the journey. So fundraising is an activity. It is not an outcome. Working on the greenhouses, designing them, whatever, those are activities. The outputs are things like greenhouses, but ultimately it's not about that greenhouses or that healthcare service either. The outcome is how does that improve the quality of life for people in developing countries? That is ultimately the outcome, or, or any country, any context. That is the outcome. Four, you might engage, in, you might, uh, engage with the real world to spice up your resume, and as Barry said, that's a great thing to do. Employers love that, but that should not be your ultimate goal because you can leverage those competencies and skill sets to actually go out and change the world. Over the last two years, I've spoken to over 70 people who are out there changing the world. Their median salary is $80,000. So you can change the world and you can get paid to do it. I asked all these people, what advice do you have 
for all these students out there with, you know, that twinkle in the eye and belly, and fire in their belly, they want to go out and do it. And they said three things. Tell them to step up, take the plunge, get stuff done, get stuff done now. But to do that right, you have to go out and start engaging to make sure that you're working with people in a way that they want to, that is acceptable to them. You want to change the world, but the vast majority of the people do not want their world to be changed. So impact comes from engaging, but that is not the end of the journey. So that journey from engagement to impact is long, it's often lonely, and it's very, very roundabout. So to make it real, go find infected people and work with them to make that journey more fun and exciting and ultimately impactful. Thank you.